Hi there, just read this disclaimer please. So I just thought I'd tell you a little thing that I do to kind of check on the news for, well, not really news, just kind of like updates of like dividends and, well, I'll show you. A little check that I do every day for my investment trusts. I just open all of these web pages. Uh, the website's Investigate. I think there's other places and it gives you like a feed of the news for each one. So I just check for like dividend declarations so that I can update my dividend expectations, things like that, issue of Etsy, annual reports, uh, monthly fact sheets so I can like know when they've updated the fact sheets so I can go and have a look at see what the top 10 holdings are and some of the managers might um, some of the managers might sort of make some comments every month and I'll I'll know there or in fact I'll be able to click through to the monthly fact sheet sometimes let's see so on this one I just click through sometimes yeah sometimes it opens straight away sometimes it messes around and then I can so for City of London I can have a look at the the latest fact sheet as of 31st of October then uh, yeah they're not normally quite they're not normally up to date at some point November should be arriving soon I would imagine and you can just kind of check the top 10 holdings stuff like that and dividend history things like that and um, but that's the place I go to kind of get the news first so I'll, I'll normally kind of click open all of these once a day maybe depends what other things I've got going on in my life really uh, look at compliance yeah monthly fact sheets uh, MYI BRSC um, statement of portfolio update I think this happens every week for them and they they'll sort of give you information about how the trust done in the past month and I think if I yeah comments so on this one they'll um, talk a little bit make some comments about how they think things are going and stuff um, issue of equity uh, just trying to see if there's any other kind of annual financial reports so that gives a lots of information about how they're doing and stuff sometimes I read them sometimes I scan them quickly sometimes I just search for dividend information within them to see if there's any new information there that's pertinent and it's issue of equity that's when they create more shares so if, if the um, the shares are at a premium to net, net asset value they can issue more shares to kind of help reduce that by increasing the supply of shares it might reduce the demand for them um, ooh, and it also kind of it adds to our it helps the net it helps our net asset, net asset value as well because they, they issue the shares at a price above the net asset value but then they can buy Stock, they can buy shares in whatever they want to buy below below the net asset value, so it actually helps us as well as getting the premium or discount back to zero. Uh, Jemmy AGMs again. I don't know. I don't know what this is. They always have gearing announcements for for JP Morgan Global. What's it called? JP Morgan Global Emerging, Emerging Market Income. Don't, don't quite know what they are to, to be honest I presume it's just telling us how much their debt is but we don't really need updating every day do we I don't think anyway um, Asian ah so transaction in owned shares that normally means it's the opposite of what I spoke about before so the issue of equity equity is where they create new shares to try and reduce the premium transaction in owned shares is where they buy back their own shares and take and sort of delist them or something. I can't. I don't know what the right words are. In the hope of reducing a discount to net, net asset value. So by reducing them, by reducing the supply of shares, it normally increases the demand. Well, it makes them scarcer. So hopefully the price will increase. Doesn't always work though, because quite often they'll they'll buy back and buy back and buy back. It doesn't really affect the share price. Sometimes people just look at the discount and think oh, I'll only buy that at this amount of discount regardless of how many shares exist and oh so this is for the standard life property um, investment trust that I own quite often it will tell you about like their buys and their sells I think I'm not sure I, I, so that so here, here's that here's one vital bit of information which you can get from the Hargreaves Lansdowne fact sheets as well but you get it sooner 
when it says there's a dividend declaration. I'll go into more detail on that set. But it's nice to see here things like, oh, I'm not, I'm not showing the screen properly, am I? Cut you off there a bit. Let me move. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. You can read that now, can't you? So, so it's like uh, tells you specifics. It's nice to read about. Um, they've just completed the purchase of a industrial unit in Aberdeen for 13.55 million. It's kind of reassuring to see uh, things like based on a two point uh, compounder. The purchase reflects an initial yield of 6.9%, rising to 7.9%. It's kind of nice to see that, considering the trust yields about 5.4%, I think, off the top of my head. I think they mention here it's recycling cash they've got from selling an industrial unit in Denby at 5.75%. So, theoretically, that's increasing their income. There'll be a delay there in between where they didn't have any properties, I presume. So it's nice just to get little bits of news like that from these pages. Uh, nothing different in Scottish Mortgage. Uh, BRFI. I'll, I'll recreate what I did yesterday. So annual fan financial report came out um, yesterday. So we click into it. I mean, sometimes, depending on the timing, sometimes it'll just be, uh, where is it? Dividend exchange rate. That's not the one I'm looking for. Sometimes it'll be a specific post on here that says dividend declaration. Other times it'll be the financial report or maybe the half yearly report. And I just do control F. If I don't want to read it, if I don't feel like I've got time to read the whole thing or, or I'm not that interested, I'll, I'll just do control F and search for DIV, D -I -D -V -I -D. I've spelt it wrong. Dividend. Outlook, it's not proper interesting. So I've done this once yesterday. So I know what I'm looking for. Results and dividends. This is not the section. I actually didn't do it by searching last yesterday. I just went through it slightly like this. Something obviously went wrong with the find there. It probably here we go. Revenue return and dividends. It obviously skipped past it for some reason. So the company's revenue return ad, revenue was eight point two four cents, and in two thousand and eighteen it was ten point one three cents. So they've obviously um, they've obviously had a downturn in the dividends that the companies are paying them. So last year it was an interim of three cents, and a final of four point four cents, and then a special of one cent. All and both of those got paid on the seventh of February, one nine. So then we come here and it says the directors are recommending a payment of a final dividend of four point seven five cents per ordinary share. In two thousand and eighteen, it was four point four cents in respect to the year ending two thousand and nineteen. Together with the interim of four cents per share, two thousand and eighteen, it was three percent. This represents a total of seven point seven five cents per share, an increase of 4.7% over total dividends, excluding special dividends. Excluding special dividends is the point. I don't know why they tell us it's an increase. I know they've technically sold us the right thing because they've said over total dividends, excluding specials. But why word it like that? Because it's a decrease. In anyone's book, it's a decrease. It's gone from it's gone from, and this is what I do now that I've got the new information. Black Rock Frontiers, that was the total dividend. So this is my estimate. I've, I keep the exchange rate here the same just for the purposes of this spreadsheet. And I, I know that it'll fluctuate a bit. But it's gone from 5.4 there to 4.75 pence. And the 3 pence from the other one has stayed the same. So we've actually gone from 216 pounds here. For me, 219. So I've lost about 17 quid, which isn't too bad. And then in my dividend spreadsheet, BRFI, change that to 475. And then nearer, nearer the time of the payment, I'll get what the exchange rate should be, and I'll modify this number. So I'll leave that grey for now.
Marcus Gray's my estimate or the historic value and then <clears throat> dividends will be will be paid on the 7th of February 2020 so I'll just make a note there that it's going to come in on the 7th of February 2020 I'll keep it grey for now, as I said, because I don't know the exchange rate yet. As you can see, um, as you can see here from the last one, at some point they'll tell us what the exchange rate is. There we go. So for the last dividends, they told us here what the exchange rate was going to be when it when it gets set. Anyway, so that's what I do. I mean, you don't need to do this. I'm just a bit sad. I haven't got much of a life, so I I like to uh, look up these things and check them. You could just check once a month and go straight to the fact sheet, because it won't be long before this fact sheet here will be updated with the with that dividend that's just been announced, and there'll be a new line there, and you'll see it. You don't even need to see it there, though. You can just wait and let the money come into your brokerage account. Um, but I like to keep on top of it and just see what's coming. In fact, I need to go into iWeb and check that that um, Scottish mortgage one there has come in haven't done that yet because uh, in fact let's do it now oh oh well that's annoying I can't show you temporarily unavailable I will say that that um, obviously when they, when they declare it a, a special dividend last year it kind of it does signal towards this bit they're not going to care so much about cutting so I, I always had it in my mind that that was a special, that 1p, so it's not like I was banking on it fully. It's only a small, it's only 16 quid, isn't it? But but here's another example of when a similar thing happened with Asian, Aberdeen Asia Focus Investment Trust. So hopefully it'll be like this, because um, cause this one had a dividend cut up here. And it was a similar situation where it was this, well actually, yeah, sorry, yeah. It was the special that got cut. The special, it was 15p in 2015. The special got cut, um, but the final dividend stayed, 10.5p. But look, by the, by the year after, it was already above where it was in 2015. So the year after, they'd upped the, fine, they'd upped the normal dividend and they'd reinstated the special dividend at 4p. And it was already back higher than where it was the year before, so who knows. Who knows whether it might be a similar situation for BlackRock Frontiers Trust as well. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.